Let's talk more about Larry Walker. It's interesting, Jim. There hasn't been a guy who's jumped up like this. It was 20%, 30%, then in the 50s, and if he makes it, he's in the 75. So the last couple of years, people have really come around to Larry Walker and what a great player he was. Well, as they should. I mean, this guy was dominant, Carlos, mm. for many, many years. And, you know, you talk about a pretty swing. The guy played the outfield well. He ran. Probably the best part of his game was his base running. Right. But we're going to get into his hitting a little bit, which I love. Left-handed. His hand. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. I was going to say that, but you do it better. Uh, you know, let's look at the eyes. And I love the chin on the shoulder. That means his head's forward. That means everything stays still. You know, he does have a leg kick, which which is okay. Some do and some don't. On contact, though, look at the stiff front side. And everything from there is just so fluid. It flows. You're talking about a big, big man. And when you watched his swing, it was just so smooth. This ball is in the old Bush Stadium there to left center. Uh, you know, same thing. Hands higher, which I love hands higher. I had mine high. And what happens when you have your hands up, you stay above the baseball. We saw, again, stiff, a firm, stiff front side. And, uh, I mean, this guy could do it all. You know, in a three-year period, I mean, look, he, in his prime, he hit 369, had 109 home runs and 312 RBIs, which, I mean, look at the guys he's compared with, Ted Williams <laughs> and Vladimir. So, look. Tomorrow, this guy, I hope, gets a call because he was one of the most dominant guys in his time, for sure. Three-time batting champion, was an MVP. Some people will say, Carlos, what about Coors Field? He had 31% of his at-bats at Coors Field, so not nearly as much as people think. And his 865 OPS on the road, better than Clemente, better than George Brett, and a few other Hall of Famers as well. Yeah, that immediately just silences <laughs> critics, right? <laughs> I mean, this guy was an animal. Let's just uh, put it out there. The way he swung the bat, I love the fact that you mentioned how fluid he was because that's what I noticed. Like, wow, it doesn't even look like he's swinging hard. Mm -hmm. And the ball just shoots off his bat like a rocket. Just has so much fun watching Larry Walker go to work every single day. And the numbers right there are pretty much evidence of the fact that this guy was a monster. So Larry Walker could get in the Hall of Fame. We have great news for everybody there in Maple Ridge, B.C. The name that we want to talk about now is Paul Konerko, Jim. He's not going to get in the Hall of Fame. And the reason we're mentioning it, though, apparently, according to the tracker, only has one vote right now. And this raised an eyebrow for both of you guys. A guy who had over 400 home runs, we're not seeing the Hall of Fame tomorrow, but he could be off the ballot if he doesn't get more votes. Yeah, which I think is a shame, personally. No I yes. mean, as a teammate of Paulie's, I mean, he was a great leader, showed up every day. You know, he played the game the way you should play it. He was in a middle he was a middle of the order guy, a run producer. And, you know, I think it, you look at the numbers. Look at look compared to Cepeda, Bagwell, McCovey, and uh, and Perez. I mean, you know, Paulie had four hundred and almost forty home runs, fourteen, twelve RBIs. I mean, you know, a guy that had the career like this needs to get more than one vote, personally. And when you look at Cepeda right there, uh, Jim, you can see that you know, it's, it's very close, a comparison. The home runs um, that Conerco has maybe just uh, could put him over the edge, but th these are the comparisons right here. You could say, well, Cepeda had a higher OPS. Yeah, but just by a little bit. So yeah. when you look at these uh, comps, you say, man, Paul Conerco's a Hall of Famer. And let me tell you, playing against him, mm. that, that's really what I'll tell you. Maybe, maybe that's why, because I was a, a little bit... Um, you know, convinced yes. when you watch him play on a nightly basis. And for some reason, every single time he plays against us, he was just crushing, going black at the left and right. And guess what? We talk about fluidity and how easy he swung. Look at that. Look how simple that is. It's just a click and go. That's it. Click and go. A nice and easy strike. We're talking about the leg kick with Larry Walker right here. It was just like a glide. It wasn't that much of a leg kick, very small. And the output was just uh, ridiculous, you know. But the effort was not, you know, you couldn't tell that he yeah. was swinging there. And the ball would go 400 feet. You know, amazing uh, on an nightly basis, very consistent. You know, I was, I was really fortunate in my career to play with some really good middle-of-the-order guys and learn from them. I learned a lot of things. One thing, if you watch Paulie, guys in scoring position, he didn't try to hit home runs. He tried to drive the runner in, and he would live the right center, right field. If you pitched him away, he would take the RBI. And... Uh, you know, again, I mean, I'm biased. He's one of my boys. But you know what? When you're good and yeah. you're deserving, you deserve you deserve to uh, to be in. And I, 
that's where we're at here. Four, yeah. 439 home runs? Just be on the bell. We're not saying get him in more. Absolutely. Just be, just merit consideration. That's all. Another, come on, another year at yeah. least. Come on. Exactly. This is how it happens, guys. See, their vote totals increase. Like I said, Larry Walker two years ago was getting 29%. A class of 2020 announcement Tuesday. Coverage begins at 3 o'clock Eastern right here on MLB Network. The live announcement at 6 Eastern. It could be Jeter, Kurt Schilling, and Larry Walker. Who knows? Find out tomorrow at 6 o'clock Eastern.